country is a big country, big in many ways, big in miles, in resources, in its population and in its heart. When disaster strikes, these sizes really show up. An example was the reaction of our whole nation to the suffering and hardship caused by the unprecedented snowfall which smothered the western plains during the winter of 48 and 49. It was no sudden catastrophe. It started quite normally. During the night of November 18, a blizzard roared over the plains. This storm passed, however, and people carried on in their usual winter fashion. But a few days later, there was another blizzard, and another, then another. Huge drifts blocked roads and railways, piled up around towns, villages, and ranches, and left many completely marooned. 300,000 persons were bound in hardship and isolation. Over $3 million worth of cattle were in immediate jeopardy. Each day took its toll in human lives and dead cattle. Word flashed out to the nation. Western, plains, snowbound. When the barrage of blizzards continued to blast the area, Operation Snowbound was conceived. The 5th Army tackled the 139,000 square miles of deep rolling white. Tractors hacked at the vast snow sea, but more help, knowledge, and experience was needed. A call went out for contractors, operators, and additional power equipment. The response was quick. Men willing and able to do this work through long, cold hours answered the call for help. American industry backed these men by shipping Red Ball Express, all available bulldozers, motor graders, and hay balers. A formidable group, the Fifth Army, American industry, contractors, equipment operators, and more than a thousand pieces of modern powerful equipment rammed into the ever-deepening snow. Now the battle clanked into high gear. A brutal, furious battle, the greatest mass bulldozer and snow equipment operation in history. Bitter cold, 15 and 20 degrees below zero, joined forces with the killer blizzards against mere man and his machines. Motor graders battled stubborn ice-coated drifts day and night. Vicious biting winds punished the equipment operators and rescue teams. In this nip-and-tuck battle, food was delivered to isolated ranches, hay was dropped to starving, half-frozen cattle, and some main roads were opened. New snow and winds roared in from the Rockies, threatening to stop Operation Snowbound. The worst winter in history was in full swing. It was a severe test for men and machines. Blizzard-wise operators passed the word on how to tackle the deep snow, push it off in layers, level the dips, until you've worked your way down to solid footing. Paths to haystacks alone made up a gigantic operation. Sitting in lonely isolation, the half-buried stacks were inaccessible. Cattle couldn't get at them. Fifth Army contractors and bulldozers opened trails to the feed and saved thousands of cattle. In many cases, whole herds were kept alive by these hard-hitting machines. Tough, steady power ripped life lanes in the vast white blanket which smothered the tremendous acreage of beef-producing ranches. Mountainous drifts crumpled. Slowly, the men and machines rolled back the snow. Sick, starving cattle needed hay, lots of hay, quickly. Range herds, still in good form, had to get to stacks for immediate feeding. Working around the clock was the only way to do the job. Cold, hungry, tired, and alone. Operators kept their rugged tractors working, bucking, smashing, and pushing at the heavy ice-layered snow. It was a job for men, and men did it. In spite of this all-out war organization and the efforts of valiant army and contractor crews, cattle continued to perish under the Siberian conditions. Ranch yards were littered with dead animals, carcasses, dragged in from the range, were stacked for burial near the barns. Out in the range, dead cattle were grim monuments to the tragedy of the plains. An unknown number of calves perished on the blizzard-pounded range, and no accurate count will ever be compiled. A shovel-equipped tractor owned by this ranch kept many thousand head of cattle alive. 
This versatile machine fed marooned herds and opened access trails. Snow was removed from around stacks. Nine-ton stacks were pushed onto low boys and hauled across miles of Arctic desolation to stricken herds. This tractor became a friend of the cattle. They came to recognize the powerful purr of its smooth-running two-cycle diesel engine and its bright orange color. Frequently, cattle would attempt to follow it, knowing that it was going for feet. Young calves in the ranch pens were kept alive with feed brought in by the tractor. The deep drifts were impassable to horses, autos, or trucks. The only vehicle capable of motion on this 28,000-acre ranch was the tractor. This was typical throughout the three-state disaster area. Tractors, manned by determined iron men, kept the loss of human life and cattle at the lowest possible level. So more hay could be transported over greater distances to starving cattle, farm machinery manufacturers diverted a sizable portion of their baler output to the disaster area. In many cases, baling machines were hauled right to the stacks. Willing crews of ranchers and hands fed hay into these machines, which rolled up bales at the rate of four a minute. Old men, young men, ranch hands and ranchers baled hay day after day in all kinds of weather. Biting cold, snow and wind made little difference. Wherever there was a baler, there were men to feed it. Hay for direct feeding was baled at tremendous rates. National Guardsmen and private citizens kept their vehicles on the road constantly, delivering bales of hay to ranchers unable to reach their own haystacks. In the case of ranches which were so isolated that there was neither time nor machinery available to break through, National Guard airplanes were loaded up with precious bales and the hay was delivered direct to the cattle by the same methods employed in supplying our combat troops in the last war. Baled hay was the answer to many a rancher's prayer. Operation Snowbound is a story of disaster, but it's a story, too, of disaster averted. 4,000 persons, plus the hardy citizens of the affected area, subdued the almost overwhelming force of the elements by working ceaselessly under the most severe conditions. The Army, Air Force, Civil Air Patrols, National Guard, Naval Reserve, Red Cross, contractors, equipment operators, and American industry stopped a major catastrophe that would have been national in scope. Operation Snowbound, the 5th Army's far-flung digging, plowing, bulldozing, and rescue mission in this blizzard-blitzed area, demonstrated once again the bigness of this nation, especially the bigness of its spirit and the bigness of its heart. Thank you.